What's up, everybody? Welcome to Philly Insider Podcast. Today, we got a special we got a special vid for you guys. It's the day before the NBA playoff schedule is going to be set. And you know, everything's going to change. But we still wanted to react to what things looked like beforehand. And by we, I am, of course, referring to the one and only Dan Rodarmel. I can never get the pointing on the screen right. I'm probably right. Dan Rodarmel, we got Hunter with me, and the one and only Seth Fisher. So with that being said, guys, I mean, wow, what a season. With one game left, this has been some teams rose, some teams fell. And along those lines, guys, there were some surprises. There were some notable surprises this year. Let me first, before we get into any of that, read out the seedings as they are now, the day before the final day of the NBA regular season. We have the Heat, who are locked into the one seed, so that won't change. But then two through like 11 is still yet to be decided. Those can all move. And let's go through, sorry, two through 10, not two through 11. At two, we have the Bucks, followed at a close three by the Celtics, our Sixers at four, the Raptors holding five steady. We got the Bulls at six, the Nets at seven, the Cavs at eight, the Hawks at nine, and last but not least, the Hornets making up the 10th seed. So guys, we're going to talk, what's the most surprising team so far for this NBA regular season? Dan, who had you the most shocked, man? Man. There are a couple teams you can go with, but I, I think I'm going to have to stick with the Cavaliers here. Honestly, was not expecting much of this team recently. Like, coming into the season, I don't think anyone would have projected that they've been in playoffs. But with a young team, you know, you've got Jared Allen. Uh, you've got Karis LeVert now. Um, Colin Sexton. Uh, Laurie Mackinac. I don't even know how to say his last name. I was going to try. Markinen? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. But uh, they've been a a very surprisingly good team. Uh, I would say a well-coached team, to be honest with you, because no one ever thought that they would be around at all in the playoffs. So um, I think that would be my biggest surprise just for the sole fact that no one expected them to be here. So I, I think they've been uh, the shocking one to be in the playoff conversation. I hear you, man. Definitely the Cavs were... I don't think anyone, did anyone have the Cavs in the playoff picture like prior to that? I don't I didn't hear anyone saying it at all. Well, anyway, with that being said, Hunter, who you got, man? Who who just did you not see coming? I'm, I'm going to go with a team that I knew was going to be in the playoffs, but I didn't expect them to be the three seed, the Celtics. They really struggled to kind of play team basketball early in the year, which has kind of been their calling card the last years. Look, I know they have Tatum and Brown, but like those guys just know how to play as a team together usually, especially Tatum and Brown. And look, they've again, once again, they found a way in the second half to rally with each other. Um, I don't know how to say the coach's name. I'm Udoka, I think is his name. He coached for us for a number of years. I should know his name. Um, but I had a feeling he was going to be a, a good head coach. He's done a really good job with the squad there. You know, even with Brad Stevens going up to the front office, you know, um, he had some good years. Some people weren't happy about that. Some people were happy about that. So, you know, it was kind of up in the air how he was going to do. He's done a phenomenal job with that team. And even without Robert Williams, I think he got hurt recently. He's done for the season. You know, they're still going to be a threat going into the playoffs. Agreed. The Celtics, they really struggled out of the gate, but they got it very much together down the stretch. Seth, before we get to you, I'm just going to give mine real fast. Man, I did not see the Raptors being the five seed. Like, they have struggled for talent over recent years. I know everybody hung their hat on Siakam, but like he hadn't really shown the ability to take that next, next step in his game from like good player to like potential star, superstar player. And he's put the team on his back when he's been out there this year. And then you talk about other guys who have really come along, like OG Ananobi, he wasn't even there when we played them this last game. But the Raptors just, they don't really have many players who you can just name off the top of their head, but Fred Van Fleet's been putting in work. And they really are the definition of team basketball. Those guys are out there playing together. I did not see this coming, though. They really lack what we consider the star power that you need to get through the playoffs in today's NBA. So hats off to the Raptors. Fish, let's hear it. So um, I would agree with you with the Raptors. Um, for the sake of conversation, I'll go with the – why am I forgetting there? DeMar DeRozan and the Chicago Bulls. Um, I think – Coming out of the gates, they came out very strong. Uh, DeMar DeRozan obviously was game winner after game winner. It's oh week after week. Just, he was a human highlight reel. Um, you know, I thought they were kind of going to fizzle out, but I think they've, they've maintained pretty well throughout the season. So I think um, they're going to be a tough, a tough first-round team. For sure. And with that, 
Well, let's get into the next topics, gentlemen. We're going to go through this question has two levels. So teams we're fearing the most right now. So we're going to start by going around with who we're fearing the most in the first round. So let's get through that first. Fish, you just ended off, but we're going to have you go back to back. Who are you least looking to see in this first round matchup? And I just, I was just going to say, just to preface, uh, the two teams we can play, I think, are down to Toronto and Chicago now. Uh, those are the only two possibilities we have. So just so, just preface. Yeah. Got you. All right, Fish, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, I'll say Toronto. I think uh, to one of your guys' points, I forget who talks about the Raptors being a threat, um, a, a surprise team. Pascal Siakam, man, he, he was a beast. I was I was very surprised at the steps he took in his game. Um, he doesn't seem like the best matchup for Embiid. I believe he's a small forward. Is that correct, Siakam? Yeah, I'd be surprised if he's not listed as a small forward. At best, power forward, but I doubt yeah. it. Got it, got it. So it's just I think the Raptors, for whatever reason, not – Embiid has had a kryptonite team, but they have always played Embiid very tough and made things very hard on him. Um, not to mention that Matisse Thybul could be out, will be out um, road games if we do end up playing that team. So I think that could be a very tough first round matchup. For sure, man. Dan, who is it? Yeah, I mean, now knowing that it's just the Raptors and the Bulls, I got to pick the Raptors. I mean, I mean knowing that Matisse isn't is possibly not going to be there like that defensively that we take a big risk there. Uh, I mean, just with Ananobi being a perimeter shooter, um, even Prince Achua, who has been like very good rookie this year. So this dude has been balling, Van Vliet veteran. He knows what he's doing. Siakam, just like Seth was saying, kind of a mismatch for if Embiid would be on him or I don't even know at, at this point, maybe Toby. Um, I mean, we kind of saw it the other night. Siakam was definitely cooking against us. So, uh, yeah, Raptors have got to be the one that we're kind of fearing right now in the first round. Yeah, no, they're a tough draw. And, Hunter, before you go, I'm just going to say this. I think I'm gonna think it's going to be a unanimous sweep here, gentlemen. Hunter obviously hasn't gone yet, but, like, this is my big reasoning behind it. I'm saying the Raptors just because I think we have the Bulls number. There's some teams you just feel like you have the mental edge over where you get onto the court and you just never, you never doubt it. You're just like, we have this team down. We're not giving up this game. And for us, I feel like this season, that's really been the Bulls. It just never felt like we've even entertained the thought of losing to them when we went up against them. So I really think for me, all the reasons you guys listed are, I would agree with all of them, but I'd also argue the mental edge as well. Whereas Seth, I think you're the one who said it. MB the Raptors have like played us very close. They have never been one of those teams where they've just gone away. They have always come to fight against the Sixers. So I'd argue the mental edge is going to be tougher with the Raptors. And Hunter, you making it a sweep? Yeah, no, I'm definitely going with the Bulls or the, the Raptors. I mean, look, I watched the Sixers play the Bulls earlier this year in Chicago, uh, and we took care of business. The guy behind me said that Vujovic was going to own Embiid. Yeah, that didn't happen at all. It went the other way around. But look, DeMar DeRozan's an unreal player. I mean, I really enjoyed watching him play. He just gets whatever he wants in the mid-range. It's not fair. But outside of that, they're a little inexperienced in some spots. You know, a lot of those guys have, just haven't had a ton of playoff basketball experience outside of the big stars they have there. So, I, you know, I think the Raptors, I really think there's a really strong chance we lose that, that series. It gives me not even Hawks vibes because the Hawks, I don't even think we're as good as the Raptors are now, even when they call it lightning a bottle. Like, the Raptors have championship DNA. They have a championship coach who's been there before. Granted, with Kawhi Leonard, but still, I mean, Nick Nurse got a lot of credit for that because for a number of years, they did it with Dwayne Casey. Fired Dwayne Casey when he was head coach of the year. So, you know, he's really turned them around. I mean, for the good, even without Kawhi, they've been good. And, yeah, they've, they've got a lot of role players over there who know how to do their job. And I, I fear them just kind of picking apart Toby. No offense to Toby. Like, he's not even that bad of a defender. It's just the matchups they're going to have on defense – do not favor Toby at all. Agreed. And now, gentlemen, we go to the second half of this question, which is first round matchups aside, who's looking the most dangerous in the East? Who are we least willing to see the Sixers play in these playoffs, whether that's any? And this goes one, this goes one through 10 all the way down to the play-in. And I'm just going to start us off. I will be terrified if we have to play the Bucs. That is too much three-point shooting. The way they designed their offense is pretty much built to take advantage of our weakness, which is three-point defense. Our three-point defense is horrible. 
It has been horrible since the start of the season. It got worse when Harden got traded here because we lost some defense. And it's just unavoidable. Like our perimeter defense is just straight up bad. Sometimes you see shooters open by like five feet as if they're just seeing warm up shots. And with the way Giannis can get into the lane, you have to send at least a double at him. Sometimes a triple, if we're being honest, and that's going to leave shooters open. And it's not like we have the recovery time to get over to him. So yeah, for me, it's the Bucks, guys. I just, I really don't want to see them. Dan, who is it? Yeah. Um, just for the sake of a different argument, I was going to the Bucks, but I got to, I got to go with Brooklyn. Like, we kind of saw what happened when no one could guard both KD and Kyrie. It's just, it's just hard to do it. Um, and personally, we don't have the defenders to be able to even, you know, keep them to 20 each. Like, it's going to be impossible. Um, so Brooklyn in general, like, is just going to be a tough team to beat. The way that KD, KD is just unstoppable. I mean, we, no matter who was on him. He was getting buckets. Kyrie's going to cook. I mean, you know, I, I feel like Maxi and um, let's just say Maxi for now has been better defensively uh, down the stretch because he's, you know, he's gotten more reps. He's gotten more time to work with the team. Um, but he just can't. Like, it, Kyrie has the experience. It's he's been it. to the playoffs. Katie has been to the playoffs. These guys know what they're doing. Um, and, you know, Besides that, the rest of their team has been playing well around them as of Shout recently. Out to Bruce Brown. So Bruce Brown has been absolutely cooking for them. Um, so I, I would say Brooklyn is the most to fear since defensively we wouldn't stand a chance. Yeah, no, that's a tough matchup to draw. I will say that we played rested Kyrie, and Kyrie, who's actually up to work every day, is significantly not that guy compared to rested Kyrie, who had like eight months off when he played us. Seth, I see a smile with you, there. Sanjay. I think the Bucs are a very tough matchup uh, as far as their three-point shooting goes. But I look more at their championship DNA. Just they've been there before. They played in the big games. They've shot up. Uh, they're a well-coached team. Um, both both ends of the floor, they make it tough for the Sixers. It's always a tough game with the Buck. Um, regard win or lose, it's it's always always a close game um, between the Sixers and the Bucs. But a seven-game series um, that would it's very challenging. Agreed. There's the championship DNA cannot be underestimated. Some people will be like, well, you know, it's just one year and it's hard to repeat, but that experience that's invaluable. Hunter close us out on man. I mean, outside of the Atlanta Hawks, it's definitely, you know, for me, it's definitely uh Brooklyn, like Dan said. Um, but for the sake of another argument, I'll go, I'll just mention Miami. Look, I know they've kind of had some yeah. internal problems there. I know Jimmy Butler was ready to fight Eric Spolstra, um, which was just a hilarious commentary. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you talk about three-point shooting. Those guys have guys who can hit from the outside and just, it kills us. It's really weird. We beat them without Harden and Embiid. But when Harden and Embiid were out there, we really, you know, I don't know if we actually know we played them with Harden, but you know, they're, they're, they're a tough team to beat. I would be worried about that. There is the Jimmy Butler factor where I'd be really sick if we beat them just because Jimmy's on another squad now, but Jimmy also might be motiv motivated to beat us in the same way for not keeping around. So yeah, I, I worry about the heat. Nets are definitely number one for me though. 